ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. of the Department of National Defense and Secretary Lloyd Austin III of the U.S. Department of Defense. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The visit of U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin III here in the Philippines signifies a strong bond and enduring partnership between the Philippines and the United States, particularly in the areas of humanitarian assistance, economic development, and peace and security, among others. Even the President said that uh, our relationship uh, will become stronger and robust. Moreover, the trip of the Honorable Secretary Austin symbolizes the United States government's steadfast commitment to help its allies in preserving a free and open Indo-Pacific. Our nation shares the belief that sustainable development and genuine peace should go hand in hand. During our meeting, we took stock of priority areas, including the full implementation of the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, or EDCA, by completing the ongoing projects as well as the agreement to designate new sites where EDCA agreement agreed locations may be developed. We will work on the timely conclusion of the framework of cooperation that will facilitate secured exchange of information between our defense establishments. We also encourage the continued planning and conduct of high-impact and high-value activities, primarily through the Philippine-U.S. Mutual Defense Board, Security Engagement Board, or MDB-SCB, and other Philippine-U.S. cooperative mechanisms. Secretary Austin and I have also agreed to deepen bilateral cooperation to support the Philippine defense capability needs as well as the Philippine-U.S. Alliance. The bilateral meeting we held today will further strengthen our nation's collaborative efforts in addressing pressing security threats in the region as well as effectively dealing with the natural disasters caused by the climate change, a major global concern we need to con confront head-on. We shall continue to work towards maintaining a stable, rule-based, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific region, along with partner countries. We strongly oppose any unilateral action or attempt to disrupt current world order and share the same views that all countries should resolve any issue peacefully and adhere to the international law, particularly the United Nations Conventions of the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS. The Philippines also appreciates the U.S. continued support in our fight against COVID-19 and our counterterrorism efforts down south. Our discussion focused on how our countries can continue to work together in order to preserve the Philippine territorial integrity. We also talk about the initiatives that uh, our nation can carry out to mitigate the impact of climate change in our societies. These efforts, will, which we hope to jointly undertake is in line with the guidance of President Ferdinand Marcos, and that is for the Defense Department to make sure that not an inch of our nation's territory will be lost, and our people's safety and security will be ensured by the strengthening our diplomatic relations with our allies, <coughs> preserve peace, and create a stable international environment in the Asia-Pacific region. Thank you, and good morning once again to all. Secretary, good morning, everyone. Uh, Secretary Galvez, uh, thanks for a very productive meeting. And congratulations again on your new position. I look forward to continuing to work closely together. Now, this was the fourth discussion that I've had with the Department of National Defense leaders since the start of the Marcos administration. And that just underscores the importance that both of our countries place on this relationship. This is our oldest treaty alliance in Southeast Asia. We conduct more than 500 defense engagements together every year. As President Biden has made clear, America's commitment to the defense of the Philippines is ironclad. Our alliance makes both of our democracies more secure and helps uphold a free and open Indo-Pacific. And today, we discussed ways to make this vital, vital alliance even stronger.
We talked about enhancing our mutual defense posture and strengthening our commitments under our mutual defense treaty. We discussed expanding the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, which allows our forces to operate together more efficiently from key sites across the Philippines. We talked about how we are co-investing in ETCA sites to support security cooperation, combined training, humanitarian, humanitarian assistance, and disaster relief. And all those efforts make both of our countries more secure. And, I'm, and we're pleased to announce today that President Marcos has approved four new EDCA locations. And that brings the total number of EDCA sites to nine. And I'm grateful to President Marcos for this decision. Today, Secretary Galvez and I also reaffirm, reaffirmed our mutual defense treaty commitments. And we'd note that the mutual defense treaty applies to armed attacks on either of our armed forces, public vessels, or aircraft anywhere in the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea. We discussed concrete actions to address destabilizing activities in the waters surrounding the Philippines, including the West Philippine Sea. And we remain committed to strengthening our mutual capacities to resist armed attack. That's just part of our efforts to modernize our alliance. And these efforts are especially important as the People's Republic of China continues to advance its illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. Now, I'm proud of the work that we've done together. I am optimistic about the future of our alliance, and I am confident that we will continue to work together to defend our shared values of freedom, democracy, and human dignity. As you've heard me say before, the United States and the Philippines are more than just allies. We're family. So once again, Mr. Secretary, thanks for your hospitality, and thanks to everyone. We'll be glad to take a few questions. All right, our first question will go to Karen DeYoung with the Washington Post. Thank you, Secretaries. Um, this is a question to, to both of you. I wonder if you could tell us the location of the new access sites and specifically how they position each of your forces better to hopefully deter and possibly confront Chinese aggression in the South China Sea and beyond in the region and to address Philippines specific concerns. And more generally, it's no secret that relations between our two governments were strained under the previous Philippines administration. I wonder if you could give us your assessment of the relationship now and, and moving forward. Thank you. We'll start with the end of that, Karen, and my assessment, and uh, I share this assessment with many of the, le with, with the leadership in our government, is that this relationship is strong, and we will continue to work hard to, uh, to strengthen it uh, further. Uh, in terms of the EDCA uh, locations, I just want to be clear that uh, we're, not, we're not seeking permanent basing in the Philippines. As you heard us say in our statements here, uh, EDCA, EDCA is a cooperative agreement that uh, enables uh, rotational activities. And so it's a key pillar of uh, training and, and uh, opportunities for, uh, to strengthen our interoperability. And it also provides us the ability to uh, respond effectively to uh, humanitarian uh, issues and, and also uh, disaster relief. Uh, and, and other types of crisis, not just for the Philippines, but uh, for the region throughout. And uh, I'll turn it over to my, my colleague here, Secretary Galvez. Yes, uh, we have agreed uh, uh, that uh, the, you know, the statement of the sites uh, will be concluded uh, once uh, we have already made uh, collaboration also with the local uh, communities. Because uh, when we you know, when we make announcements, uh, we need to you know, we need uh, to this. Uh, uh, local government, the governors, and also the local populace to be consulted. 
And the president wanted that uh, all of our actions should be consulted with our local governments. And we wanted also to, to, you know, to, to, to see that uh, these you know, disagreements of the four ETCA sites uh, will be finished soon, considering that uh, we are also uh, making some uh, inspections on how we will do things, particularly that uh, these areas uh, identified are very vulnerable to climate change. And uh, we have seen uh, during uh, the typhoon Ondoy and Ramil that uh, our, our ally, uh, U.S., have the deployed uh, four C-130s and also the Seahawks there uh, when uh, the, you know, the, the areas were being isolated. So what, uh, we, what we want is really to, to, to tell you that uh, we will uh, finish uh, the, you know, the identification soonest. And uh, we are committed to, you know, to a strong alliance. Uh, the president uh, had said that our alliance now is um, more stronger and robust, as we said it uh, this morning. And uh, we are very confident that uh, uh, working with Secretary Anyo and other and, other, and with the AEP, uh, we are looking forward that uh, we will have a high drive of uh, some activities uh, with, uh, with, you know, with uh, our allies. And uh, I would like to thank uh, this opportunity that uh, the visit of, uh, of uh, uh, Secretary Lloyd Austin is very, very meaningful to us. This is a uh, uh, symbolic uh, to all of us that uh, the U.S. Uh, will always uh, uh, be there for us. Uh, the next question will come from Chino Gaston of GMA7. Uh, good afternoon, secretaries. Um, the U.S. being the biggest or one of the biggest players in the West Philippine Sea, um, may we have your insight on the uh, what people look at as uh, more assertive activity of the Philippines and the West Philippine Sea in response to Chinese incursions within our EEZ, like uh, the Philippine ships shadowing uh, the Chinese ships, which the U.S., uh, we understand, routinely does. And your take also, uh, Mr. Secretary, on the code of conduct. Does that help, do you think? What's the U.S. take on the code of conduct, which many see as uh, merely China's attempt to have a claim of legitimacy if it's included between a code of conduct between ASEAN and China. Thank you, sir. So um, we will continue to work with our allies and partners uh, in the region uh, who are like-minded and who, uh, who value a free uh, and open Indo-Pacific. And you've heard both of us talk about that today. Uh, that, that's, that's real important. Uh, you've also heard us talk about um, the rules-based international order and maintaining that. So, you know, the ability of nations to sail, uh, sail the seas and uh, operate in international waters and, and operate in, in the international skies, I think it's really important. And we would, uh, we would look uh, for countries to, to respect uh, a rules-based international order. Uh, and um, so that's our focus, and it, it's, it's been our focus in the past, and it will remain our focus going forward. So. All right, our next question will go to Jeff Selden from VOA. Secretary, Secretary Galvez, um, U.S. officials have said one of the aims of these talks has been to help the Philippines with military modernization and was wondering what type of military modernization help is the Philippines looking for, training, equipment, and, and if equipment, what sort of equipment, weapons and systems uh, does the Philippines military need to take on both the threats from terrorism and the growing concerns in the region, especially the aggressiveness from, from China? And Secretary Austin, what is the U.S. looking to provide and when? And as part of the new EDCA agreement, how many more U.S. troops will be stationed in the Philippines in addition to the 500 that are already here? And, and if I may, Secretary Austin, following the decision to provide Ukraine with more tanks, Kiev has been asking for more F-16s. A number of European allies have said that they think it's a good idea. Uh, given that, is providing F-16s to Ukraine something that you're willing to reconsider? Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, so on the first piece, um, as I said earlier, uh, ETCA is not about uh, permanent basing here in the Philippines. Uh, it's about providing access that allows us to 
uh, increase our uh, training opportunities with, uh, with our partners, our allies here. Uh, it's, it's about uh, having the ability to, uh, uh, to respond in a more uh, effective fashion as we're faced, as we're collectively faced with uh, uh, humanitarian assistance issues or natural uh, or, or disaster response issues. Uh, and so this is an opportunity to, uh, to increase our effectiveness, increase interoperability. It is not about permanent basing, but it is a big deal. It's a really big deal uh, in that, uh, you know, it gives us, presents, provides us the opportunity again to interact a bit more uh, in an effective way. Uh, regarding F-16s, I think was your second question, right? You know, Jeff, I'm, we're focused on providing Ukraine the capability that it needs to be effective uh, in its upcoming uh, anticipated uh, counteroffensive in the spring. And so we're doing everything we can to get them the capabilities that they need right now to be effective on the battlefield. Uh, you've heard us talk about uh, artillery, air defense. Uh, we provided, made a big push to provide more armored vehicle capability, and so all of those things are in play. And we're also increasing the training that we're providing the, the uh, Ukrainians so that these higher-end platforms they can effectively use in combat. So that's, that's our focus uh, currently, and, and I think, uh, it, you know, as we bring this together in support of the Ukrainians, it's going to provide a significant uh, capability. Yeah, and Jeff, um, on your question that uh, what are the things that we need uh, in order to increase our, our, our capability, I believe it's more on uh, the heavy lift and medium lift capability, like uh, what we have bought before for, for our disaster relief and search uh, and rescue operations, because uh, as you all know, with the sheer line uh, effect of uh, much raining, we really need uh, C-130s and also uh, uh, those uh, those. Uh, that's, that's that the, the, the Black Hawk that we bought, that we uh, got reconfigured to SAR, search and rescue capability. And also in our capability to defend our, our maritime uh, domain. And uh, I believe uh, one of the uh, requests of the Chief of Staff is really on how to detect even uh, the, you know, the, the coastal and the submarine uh, capability uh, uh, down there in the West Philippine Sea. And, we also uh, uh, look at the capability, uh, the capability training as uh, uh, Secretary Lloyd Austin that uh, we will modernize our alliance and I believe with the first class training that we will be get getting from, from uh, the U.S. Uh, forces and uh, we will try to expand it, I believe we will have a strong army and strong armed forces. As we have uh, shared the same experience when we were in West Mingkong, the Special Operation Task Force that has stayed there since uh, uh, 2000. Uh, there is a rotational uh, deployments of uh, areas like in Basilan and also Sulu in the early days. These, you know, these uh, deployments are very useful to us and very, very, you know, very uh, encouraging. So considering that uh, we were able to, you know, we were able to eradicate uh, terrorism in the areas of Sulu, Basilan, and now, as we have boasted, uh, Sulu now has a nightlife. <laughs> Sulu, before, uh, you cannot uh, see uh, any people during 12, uh, 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 four, four, 4 o'clock in, in the afternoon. They are all in their houses. Now they, we have a freedom of movement. And I think uh, uh, Secretary Austin is very much amazed that uh, more than hundreds of uh, Abu Sayyaf and terrorists uh, and jihadists have already been surrendered. And they, they are now living a peaceful life. And I believe uh, the, the uh, tremendous help of uh, of the, the U.S., particularly also in the Battle of Marawi, which is, um, I've been involved with. I would like to, to, to really say that uh, this is my time to thank uh, the U.S. government for helping us and not leaving us in those fight. And uh, the, you know, the capability that they have, they have brought to us, uh, the uh, eye in the sky, uh, the Scan Eagle, and also the C-130 that are roaming around Marawi 24-7, uh, that capability is very, very also useful to patrol uh, our territory. And uh, that's what I think uh, what we need, the joint training and the joint experience that we had uh, has been very, very robust. And we have seen the success of our counterterrorism effort down south. 
The last question will come from Karen Lemma of uh, Reuters. Secretary Austin, hello, Secretary Galvez. Uh, I know you were already asked about the EDCA sites, but if I could press on that question, if you could at least confirm whether these bases will be located in the northern uh, part of Luzon that is close to Taiwan and in Palawan, which is close to Spratlys, and what role will these sites play in the event of a conflict over Taiwan? And uh, Secretary Austin, if I may ask you, because the North Korean Foreign Minister Ministry uh, issued a statement today after the U.S. South Korea drills. The U they said that the United States have pushed the situation to an extreme red line and threatened to turn the peninsula into a huge war arsenal and a more critical war zone. Thank you. Uh, as I've said earlier, uh, we will uh, help with the announcement of the EDCA sites because uh, uh, our, no, our protocols and also our dip diplomatic notes have not uh, been completed. So we need uh, to complete all the staff work, including our consultation with uh, the LGUs. So pardon me, I, will not, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, really say where, where the, uh, the, the sites are located. Please, uh, um, also we want also to respect uh, the consultations with our LGUs and also with uh, Secretary uh, Ben Avalos. Sir, I'm sorry, but when you say f uh, four locations, it's four bases. Because Nabim, I think there was an earlier announcement. Think, I think we have to remove uh, the word basis because we called it as a site. Okay, site. Yes. Secretary. So your question was uh, my reaction to the yes. statement released yes. by North Korea? Yes. Um, I, I would simply say that, uh, you know, our goal is and always has been uh, to promote uh, greater security and stability throughout the, the region. Uh, we remain committed to uh, uh, our uh, extended deterrence uh, commitment, and we're very serious about that uh, when, it, when it comes to the, to the ROK. Uh, and we will continue to, uh, uh, to work alongside our, our allies and, and train and uh, ensure that uh, we maintain uh, credible and ready forces. Uh, so I'll stop there. Thank you, Secretary. Appreciate it.